Former FBI Director James Comey was barely two and a half minutes into his opening remarks when he first accused the president of lying, specifically about Mr. Trump's reasons for firing him. The administration then chose to defame me and more importantly the FBI by saying that the organization was in disarray, that it was poorly led, that the workforce had lost confidence in its leader. Those were lies, plain and simple. And it would not be the last time he called Mr. Trump a liar. In fact, he said the reason he took notes immediately after his nine meetings and phone conversations with the president, a step he never took after interactions with Presidents Bush or Obama, is because he feared the president might lie about them. I knew that there might come a day when I would need a record of what had happened, not just to defend myself, but to defend the FBI and, and our integrity as an institution and the independence of our investigative function. I was honestly concerned that he might lie about the nature of our meeting, and so I thought it really important to document. Raise your right hand. Comey made clear once and for all that President Trump was not personally under any open FBI investigation by the time he was fired in May. Was the president under investigation at the time of your dismissal on May 9th? No. However, he accused the president of what he called, quote, very disturbing, very concerning interference in the ongoing Russia investigation he was leading. He said definitively that he believed his firing was based directly on his handling of the Russia pro. There's no doubt that it's a fair judgment, it's my judgment, that I was fired because of the Russia investigation. I was fired in some way to change, or the endeavor was to change the way the Russia investigation was being conducted. And he said that when the president told him he hoped he would let the investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn go, Comey believed the president was ordering him to end the probe. I took it as a direction. I mean, this is the president of the United States with me alone saying, I hope this. I took it as this is what he wants me to do. Now, I didn't, I didn't obey that, but that's the way I took it. How was he so certain? He explained to senators that's in part because the president made sure he was the only person in the room. A really significant fact to me is, so why did he kick everybody out of the Oval Office? Why would you kick the attorney general, the president, the chief of staff out to talk to me if it was about something else? And so that, that to me, is a, as an investigator, is a very significant fact. Senators of both parties pressed Comey on why he never told the president that his comments and requests were inappropriate. You're big, you're strong. I know the Oval Office, and I know uh, what happens to people when they walk in. There is a certain amount of intimidation. But why didn't you stop and say, Mr. President, this is wrong. I cannot discuss this with you. It's a great question. Maybe if I were stronger, I would have. I was so stunned by the conversation that I just took it in. Once fired, the former FBI director made a remarkable effort to shape the investigation, asking a friend to leak the contents of the memos documenting his meetings with the president to spark the appointment of a special counsel. I asked a friend of mine to share the content of the memo with a reporter. Didn't do it myself for a variety of reasons, but I asked him to because I thought that might prompt the appointment of a special counsel. An end result that Comey got with the appointment of Robert Mueller, 